Hello YouTube, it's your boy Dante with another graphics optimization guide. Today we are going to be looking at the game Woodring Waves. The sole purpose of this guide is to help you gain performance without sacrificing any noticeable visual quality. I will show you side by side comparisons of each graphics settings and their performance cost. Along with that I will show you my recommended settings as well. For this guide, I will be using an RTX 3060 Ti at 1080p resolution. Since this game is locked to 60fps, I have modded the game's max frame rate to 120fps for this guide, as my graphic card is too powerful for just 1080p 60fps even at max settings. Now with all of that out of the way, without further ado, let's do this. In graphics settings, we will only be looking at settings that actually impact performance. This game has a lot of settings that are not even actual graphics settings, but filters that do not affect performance at all, like foliage fade out, damage numbers, wounded effects, global color filters, etc. The first actual graphics setting is special effects quality. This setting controls the intensity of particle effects and your character's skill effects like sword slashes and all the flashy stuff. If you compare this round slash animation here, you can see that high setting has more particles added to the effect, while low is just a basic circular slash with barely any particles. When compared high to medium, there isn't any big noticeable difference. Performance wise in this particle heavy scene, low gave me a 5 fps boost while in medium I only gained 2 fps. Here I would recommend medium special effects quality because this may have given me only 2 fps boost here with low end systems and especially laptops with weak CPUs this setting could have a bigger performance effect in fights like these or heavy particle areas. Also to notify that even if we get a mere 2 fps gain here, when we optimize all the graphics settings, they will give a huge fps gain collectively which I will show you in the end of the video. Next is shadow quality which controls the resolution of shadow in game. Ultra high has very good shadow resolution as expected. Just to notify that you should ignore the moving shadows as they are a result of the dynamic weather of this game. High also has very good shadows, in fact they are barely any different from ultra high. Medium also has good amount of shadows, but the resolution takes a hit, making them pixelated in some spots. Low in the end disables all shadows entirely, which looks very bad. Here is the performance comparison of all the settings. Here I would recommend high shadows, but if you need more FPS, you can select medium as well. Next is LOD bias. LOD stands for level of detail, and this setting controls how detailed objects like trees, grass, NPCs appear at different distances. Though in this game I tried multiple locations, and all settings exhibit the same result, and even the performance was the same. I searched on Google and found out that this game's LOD is stuck to low setting since the game's release. And it is so sad to hear that still to this date, the developers have not fixed this issue. So here just set it to low as you are stuck to that setting anyway. Capsule AO is just another name used in this game for ambient occlusion, which adds depth to the game by applying shadows on objects depending on the light's direction. These boxes are a good example of Capsule AO enabled. Disabling it removes most of the depth from the scene, making it a little flat. Performance wise, we went from 79 FPS to 83 FPS. But here I would recommend Capsule AO on, as disabling it has a big impact on the image. Volumetric fog, as the name suggests, control the quality of fog in the game, where the off setting does not disable the fog entirely. 
it just makes the fog a little thinner but it is very hard to notice. When performance is compared, I gained 4 FPS by turning it off. So here my recommended setting is off. Volumetric lighting controls light shafts in a game like this area here with a lot of light rays. Though here at off setting I was not able to spot any difference. Performance wise I was able to gain 3 FPS by turning it off which leads me to think that the difference is once again barely noticeable. Here I would recommend off volumetric lighting. The next important graphic setting is anti-aliasing which applies temporal anti-aliasing in short TAA to reduce jaggedness and pixelation in 3D models. As expected with the setting off you get a lot of pixelation and jaggedness on screen. When enabled all 3D models will have smoother edges. Here the off setting gave me a 6 FPS boost but I would recommend keeping it enabled as off looks horrible. Also to note that if you are using any form of upscaler like DLSS this setting is overwritten as DLSS has its own anti-aliasing technique. In that case just turn this setting to off. Next setting is bloom which adds a glow effect to all light sources in the game. Here you can see that disabling this effect removes the glow from all these lights here. Performance wise this setting does not cost any FPS and it is up to your personal preference whether you keep it on or off. Next is crowd density which controls the number of NPCs displayed on screen at a time. Low setting completely removes NPCs from the game. Here I thought distance would matter and the NPCs would pop up when I get close to them but that was not the case. By going to medium as expected the NPCs spawn back. After that the amount of NPCs in medium and high are the same and the distance at which they are visible is also the same. When performance is compared, I gained 4 FPS by changing from high to medium which leads me to believe that this also somehow controls the graphic fidelity of NPCs at distance but since they are far away we are not able to notice it. Here I would recommend medium crowd density. The last and the most demanding setting is ray tracing, RTX for short. All three settings below named ray trace reflections, ray trace global illumination and ray trace shadows is connected to this RTX setting here. So all these three settings below will be disabled if you set RTX to off over here. Before I show you the low medium and high setting of RTX, let us first look at the three settings below and how they affect the game performance wise. The first setting is ray trace reflections which adds real-time reflections to all reflected surfaces in the game, like this water here. As expected, the result is beautiful as you can see here. Turning reflections to off enables the baked reflections of Unreal Engine, which do not look bad but may appear lacking when viewed from weird angles like this. Performance-wise, I lost 18 FPS by turning this setting on and this is with DLSS enabled. I would recommend turning this setting on only if you have capable systems, otherwise keep it off. The second RTX setting is Ray Trace Global Illumination, RTX GI for short, which illuminates the scene and adds bounced lighting to the game. Here in this scene you can see that disabling RTX GI removes all the bounced lighting from this image. Performance wise this caused me 14 FPS so once again I would only recommend it if your PC can handle it. The last RTX setting is Ray Trace Shadows 
which adds proper shadows in the distance and also adds soft shadows to objects if they are far away from the shadow itself. Here is an example of distant shadows applied on the far structure compared to offsetting. Here is an example of a soft shadow from the tower at the back compared to offsetting which has a sharp shadow. Luckily performance wise this setting was not very demanding like the other RTX settings and I lost 7 FPS by enabling it. So I would recommend setting this to on if your system can handle it. And now let us take a look at the low, medium and high setting of ray tracing. Here is the high setting and as you can expect all the RTX effects are at full force here. When going to low we see that the image has lost a lot of bounce lighting, shadows are lacking and the reflections are a little bit pixelated. Going up to medium we gained back almost all of the bounce lighting, shadows are far better and the reflection is exactly the same as high. Performance wise the game gave me 82, 90 and 103 FPS on high, medium and low respectively. Here I would recommend medium ray tracing setting to keep the balance between visual fidelity and performance. Apart from the settings I showed, the rest of the options in graphics settings are either filters or well known settings like DLSS, VSync and resolution etc. So there is no need to show them here. Now let us compare the game's max setting with my optimized recommended settings. As you can see there is no visual loss in graphic fidelity and we went from 81 FPS to 112 FPS. And this result was with the RTX enabled at medium settings as I recommended before. Turning off RTX entirely gave me a fixed 120 FPS at all times which means it would be way over 120 if the frame rate was not locked. And this brings us to the end of the guide. If this video was helpful to you, kindly like and support the channel by subscribing. Good luck and happy gaming.